say, Lord, for your glory. For your glory. I offer my life. I offer my gifts. I offer all that I am. Many from your heart, you are talking to the King of Kings. My life, my heart, my all. It all belongs to you. Oh. Take the remaining part of me that I have not offered to you yet. Pray it from your heart. Take the remaining part of me. Take the remaining part of me that wrestles for submission to the authority of your spirit. Lord, is it my gift? Take it many from your heart tonight. Is it my intellect? Is it my life? Is it my will? Is it my emotions? Lord, take that part that is yet to come under alignment to your sovereign authority. Let me be totally immersed in the spirit. Let me become a replica of the Christ life. Shata balara ba ka prasta ba da ka da balara ba. Ram prasta ba ka shabras dila makuriya ta balara ba. Let it be a commitment from your heart. Join on ya. Let the rest of our lives be a balara. Minutes from your heart. His presence is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Indeed you are the spirit of truth. We have come to love you. We have come to believe in you. Jesus told us you will guide us into all truth. Jesus told us you would instruct us in the path of life. And we count you faithful. It's on account of our confidence in your ability to help us that we are gathered tonight. Not unto a man, not unto a sect, not unto a doctrine. But we trust your ability. You were recommended by the Christ himself to help us. So Holy Spirit, the great rabbi, tonight cause the living bread to be opened in our midst. And let there be understanding. Quicken us. 
by the grace of the Spirit, quicken us in the name that is above all names. Shake away religion from our lives. Shake away all the things that have the capacity to constrain us. For Lord, we realize that you are building an army. And we realize that not long from now the shofar will blow. And Lord, we align ourselves as generals in the making. Subjecting ourselves to the dealings of the Spirit. Beyond church. Beyond religion. Contending for the faith that was once delivered. Rising against the nominal concept of Christianity. Receiving a redefinition of what your life and power what the ability of the Holy Ghost in us is capable of doing. Lord, you are raising a generation of revivalists. You are raising men and women who will love you unto death. Men and women who love you beyond the things we can get. We thank you because our labor in the Spirit will be rewarded in the open. So we thank you. Thank you for your spirit, Lord. For the presence of the holy angels, the saints in heaven, were gathered around your throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His presence is in this place to bless us, to help us, to take us to a plane in the spirit and to prepare us. This is what God is doing in the midst of his people. Come on, just sing in the spirit. Let the melody just come out from your spirit. Not pray, sing in the spirit. Paul said, I will pray in tongues. I will pray in the spirit and I will sing in the spirit. Lord, we are certain that our prophecy will appear unto us. Hallelujah. Listen. It's important to subject yourself. Listen to me. It's important to subject yourself in this season to the dealings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. For there is an operation of the Spirit in the body of Christ. Revelation 5. Listen to me. If at this point in your life you have not expressed dissatisfaction for religion and church, then there is a need to do an extra work in your life to catch up. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, the twenty and four elders, listen to me, that when they worshipped, they said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God who was 
who is and who is to come. These are dimensions of his operations that were revealed to the people. Hallelujah. And so we see a dimension of God who was. It's not a waste. But it's to tell you that God is progressive so he will not end in the dimension who was. And then they see who is. Hallelujah. That which the Spirit is doing at the moment. And then by prophetic insight we have a revelation of that dimension that is to come. And so it's important that as we stand and begin to relate with the things of the Spirit in this day and age. That we are able to understand the emphasis of the Spirit for every time. The Bible says for the sons of Ithaca, they had a comprehension of the times. Hallelujah. And the Bible says among the organization of God's creation, He made stars. And part of the ministry of some of those stars is to be able to signify to the inhabitants of the earth when seasons change. To the end that we can align with the operation of the Spirit. For even the past glory of God contains a measure of glory. The past revelation. But that it is not sufficient to take us to the next dimensions that the nations would require. And so it's important and it becomes a responsibility upon us as citizens of the kingdom to walk in peace with the Holy Ghost so that we are able to understand His operation. For it is an error to assume that God is doing the same thing at every season. Hallelujah. In the revelation I shared with us a few weeks ago, Hallelujah, that there was a feast and there were rulers there. Those who were honored. Jesus was in their midst. But they did not recognize him. The wedding in Cana. The first miracle of Jesus. A prophetic message to what the Holy Ghost is going to be doing. And the Bible says the old wine finished. But the festivity was still on. The rulers did not know because they had been used to deceiving the people. And they had lost touch with the source of the wine. Are you following me now? And the Bible says the festivity was still on. And there was a constraint happening. But the people could not understand because there was no insight. And the Bible says only the servants followed Mary, the mother of Jesus. And they said, Jesus, there is trouble. The revelation of John, which is sent to his servants. Oh, this is the mystery that in this generation only servants will ride on horses. The princes will receive an embarrassment because they will walk after. Hallelujah. So the Bible says the servants came to Jesus. They said, although there are many crowds, we are not confused about who holds authority. And we call ourselves servants and we come. And he said, fill six pots. And when they filled it with water, Hallelujah. He said, take it to the rulers. And when he took it to the rulers, they tasted it. When they thought the dispensation and the feast was over, little did they know it was about to begin because a new kind of wine. The Bible says the rulers did not know where that wine came from. Only the servants. Hallelujah. And so there is a transition. And God is revealing things to his servants. said the Lord will not do anything but he will reveal his counsel to his servants. Praise the Lord. Then it's our responsibility to begin to search and walk in peace with the Spirit. So that we can understand the things that the Spirit is doing at every given time. There are certain revelations that we understand that have been sealed. The Bible says in Revelation 5 that there was a call in heaven. And that call was that who is worthy. So there are certain revelations that is not given freely. It's a contention. It's gotten by qualification. It's a who is worthy. To that one he will be able to open the book and unlock the scroll. He said no man was worthy to open the book. And the elder began to cry. John. Why? Because in that revelation contains certain mysteries that should be opened up. 
And the Bible makes us to understand that the, elder, the angel tapped him and said, Weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is worthy to open the book. Hallelujah. It's important to be in peace with what the Spirit of God is doing. And this is our desire in this place. The Bible says in the days of Samuel when the word of the Lord was cast. He didn't say, men, stop going to the temple. But he said the word of God was cast. Praise the Lord. So tonight, let it be that you didn't just come to do church as usual. Let it be that you came because you understand that receiving from God will position you to understand what He's doing in the Spirit. And by alignment, you become a benefactor and you become usable. It's not enough to be available. You must be usable. Hallelujah. And only the Holy Spirit is able to help us into this truth. And so, Lord, we thank you. Because you will bless us tonight. Lord, do not leave us behind. Let us follow up in pace with the things the Spirit is doing. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Be seated. Good to have everyone around. subjecting ourselves to the dealings of the spirit again and again every week every week week after week month after month we're subjecting ourselves as students in the school of the spirit allowing him to teach us and to bring us into comprehension of kingdom realities hallelujah because the time will come when the dividends of this sacrifice will appear unto all. And we want to position ourselves. We are not careful to admit that not everybody is open to the things of the Spirit. Especially in this day and age where there are all kinds of Christian distractions. Hallelujah. The Church of Christ has become a place where ethics of religion are taken as usual. But the presence of Christ and His body ought to be a place of freshness where we can communicate to the world what the Spirit of God is doing at every given time. Mm. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to share something that I believe will be a great journey great blessing to our journey in the spirit how many of you were blessed last week it was a wonderful time of prayer hallelujah if the things of the spirit are still a burden to you then there is need to retreat in the presence of God hallelujah there are lots of believers who have a problem with the things of God and I hope we do not have those kinds of people here. Let me tell you something. Um, whenever you come for koinonia, make sure that you are not just coming to fulfill a ritual. Are you listening to me, please? Ensure that you are not just coming to watch other people or to see what are the other things. You must come with a predetermination. And say, Lord, what do you have for me that can help me in this journey? We are in a journey. I'm so happy every Friday when I have the opportunity to share God's word because I understand that there is at least somebody who is interested in the things of the Spirit. And if God can find such a man, he can produce a wonder out of him. Praise the Lord. First Peter 2. Say after me, God is preparing an army. Say it like you believe it. God is preparing an army. 
Ask your neighbor, are you part of this army? Tell your neighbor, don't tell lies. Unto him who sits on the throne. To Jesus, the Lamb who was slain, glory and power. Glory and power forever and ever and ever you reign forever. Peter 2 verse 9 First Peter 2 verse 9 hmm. But ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood Never said you are members of living faith or Christ's embassy or deeper life or redeemed those are structures. You get my point? But I'm saying beyond the structures, you must look. It says, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a people of his own, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the Bible tells us clearly here that we have been called out of darkness. And given an assignment. Hallelujah. And that assignment is to show forth the praises of Him that has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Hallelujah. And tonight we are going to be examining how far we've gone in this journey and obtain grace to press ahead. Hallelujah. The children of Issachar, the Bible says, had an understanding of the times. And as a result, they knew what to do. They knew how to align themselves with the things that the Spirit was attempting to bring. And not everyone is able to align himself to the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. You know why? Because alignment means that you have to die to yourself. Hallelujah. Alignment means that you are bending to assume a posture that may not be convenient. And so it takes a revelation bigger than yourself and your personal comfort to say, Lord, regardless of how this will affect me, I am prepared to come into alignment with your divine will to the end that your plans and purposes be achieved at every given time. That as you search for men and women that you will use to do exploits, that you can find a vessel in me. The Bible says, but in a great house there are not only vessels of wood or gold and silver, but of wood and of clay. He says, some are unto dishonor and some are unto honor. He says, if a man will purge himself, that man will become a vessel unto honor, fit for the master's use. Say after me once again, God is raising an army. And say, I am part of that army. I am part of that army. Led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. We we'll just establish a few things. And then we'll pray. verse 1 
Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh. For it is near at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. Like the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people. This is the description of God's army. Please listen. A great people. And strong. There has not ever been like them before. You cannot trace them to any history. Neither shall any more be after it. Even to the years of many generations. They are characterized by a fire that devoureth before them. They are men of fire. Confirming that which the Bible says. He maketh his angels winds. And his ministers flames. And behind them a flame burneth. And the land is like the garden of Eden before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. They are thorough people. The appearance of them is like the appearance of horses. And like the horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the mountain tops they shall leap. Like the noise of the flame of fire that devoured the stubble. Like a, like a strong people set in a battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. The Bible says they shall run like mighty men. Look at this description. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. No competition. No dabbling into unnecessary things. Everyone maintaining focus. That's what Watchman Nee calls the limitation of the body. The capacity to allow every member to function within the jurisdiction of their grace. The Bible says they will not break ranks. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword. Can you imagine? They shall not be wounded. What an army. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall and they shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the star shall withdraw her shining. The Bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you light by day. It says Jehovah, the Christ himself, he will be your everlasting light. That means they will function from a different source of illumination. Not that which has been known. Are you listening to me? Because he made many lights. But at the emergence of the two great lights, there was no longer those kinds of lights. It's not like they were not truth. But they were no longer needed in light of the higher lights. Hmm. Let's finish up. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. That means the Lord himself is a commander. For his camp is very great. For he is strong who executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide? Look up please. There is, there is a campaign of the spirit. The Holy Ghost is running to and fro. Across the length and breadth of this nation. The nation of Africa and across the world. Searching for men and women who will avail themselves to be used. Hallelujah. Every time before a Kairos moment in the earth, God begins to prepare a people. And the first thing he does is to begin to beckon on them. So that they willingly offer themselves and say we are available. Are you listening to me? We are available. And then he separates those people. And begins to subject them to the trainings that will equip them for his agenda. Now the very difficult thing is this. Separation is a very difficult thing because it entails you breaking away from status quo. Breaking away from what has been received as the norm. And so your mind will fight it. Everything around you will fight it. And the pressure... That standing alone will bring to you. Will ask you whether it is worth it to stand. 
That's why the Bible says, Haven't done all to stand. Stand. Hallelujah. And all over the body of Christ, there has been a sudden awakening. Pastors, apostles, preachers, evangelists, as many who are careful enough to listen to the promptings and the dealings of the Spirit. They are beginning to blow this alarm in Zion and to sound it upon His holy mountain. That there are a people that God is preparing, is raising, is training, is building. And that the fashion of this training is not one that will be traced to the dealings of God in the past. Here and there we could take extracts from the dealings of God with Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. But that there is a unique operation of the Spirit that is bringing on this caliber of people. That will necessitate staying with the Holy Ghost part time. You will not miss the Holy Ghost and go back to history and expect to catch up. Because the dealings are foreign to the things that he has done before. And so God will entail that these people will subject themselves to the total leadership of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is why coming under the Lordship of the Spirit is only the beginning of the journey, not the end. Coming under the Lordship means that you are bringing yourself under subjection to say, Lord, you are looking for an army and you are training and preparing men and I may not have all that it takes right now but I have a willing heart. I watched Ketrin Kuhlman yesterday and I cried. I wept like a baby when I watched this dear woman of God standing in power an epitome of yieldedness to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And while she stood on the stage ministering the word of God, you could see the oneness, the similitude. You could see how, how intertwined, how mingled this woman had been with the Holy Ghost. That her utterances were so piercing, not because of the volume of her voice, but the depth and the realm from which she was fetching these things from. A woman and she made an interesting statement. She said, Catherine Kuman died a long time ago. She said, I remember the date and the time I died. She entered a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He has now become my new life. And my movement is according to the impulse of the spirit. And that is going to be the characteristic of the spiritual man. Speaking to Nicodemus, Jesus said, The wind bloweth where it listeth. You will not be able to predict this generation of people. Because they have subjected themselves under the total influence of the spirit. That's where we get the word baptism. It's from the Greek word baptizo. It means to be totally immersed in a flood such that you do not see the person again. You only see the object that immersed him. And so we come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Now a lot of believers have trivialized the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But without the Holy Spirit there is no hope. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee. Listen to me. He is the guarantee that we can become that army to the expectation of God. Because He's the one who guides us and builds us. And brothers and sisters, hear me. This has been our journey all through Koinonia. It is not a move to make a name, it's an attempt to cooperate with the Spirit and partner with Him. In bringing a convergence of as many who are interested in becoming part of this move of God. Who will indicate willingness to subject themselves to the dealings of the Spirit over time. We don't tell you lies here. We don't hype you with, with all kinds of nonsense. The Word of God comes in truth and power. And I've said it again, it will cost you to align with the Spirit. 
Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with the activities of civilians. And so when you come, there will be a demand upon you to lay aside your ambition and pick up that of the king. But then as surely as the Lord lives, there will be a reward for that sacrifice. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all. So I'm aware that there are different kinds of people and different kinds of soils. And so I want us to start tonight by reminding ourselves that every time we appear before God in Zion, we came for business. Hallelujah. We didn't just come to um, enjoy the atmosphere or to while away two or three hours. No. We came based on the revelation. Listen, I must get you to understand this. If you do not, you will not be able to benefit maximally. Are you following me now? You must come with a predetermination that I am coming to continue the training. It is not an endless training. There is a day the sound of the trumpet will blow. And at such times you will appreciate the meticulous dealings of the spirit touching issues after issues aspects after aspects flogging out a lot of things pruning different things the bible says narrow is the path that leads to life why because when you are entering that path jesus gave us a similitude of that revelation using the eye of the needle it will it will entail you divorcing yourself with a lot of things and going alone so the path is narrow. In other words, the things that can pass have been predetermined. You will not come with excess luggages and mindsets. But wide is the way that leads to destruction. And Jesus said, because the rich people have a lot of things, He said they may not be able to pass. Are you following me? And so you come with your ambitions and different things. And then some of us may come just to use Jesus Christ as an errand boy as usual. Because that's the move that has been taught in the body of Christ. And so we have a need-driven congregation who only come to God as a means to an end. And that end is to satisfy their belly and to bring themselves in a position where they are comforted. Rulers in the feast while the Lord of the harvest is in the congregation. He's not honored and he's not esteemed. But the Bible tells us in heaven that there will be a supper. And in that supper, the one who should be the head will actually be the head. Are you following me tonight? And so the first challenge that the Holy Ghost places before us tonight is to ask you how serious are you? How much are you convicted? What is your passion about the things of God and about this army that God is mobilizing? What is your concept of Christianity and church and religion? Why do you pursue God? He said, why do you call me Lord? And then I notice that there is only a receiving from you. There is no doing. You call me Lord because you came and understood by knowledge that there is a dimension of me that is able to supply your needs. You call me Lord because you understand that there is a dimension that is able to protect you and give you a wife and give you a husband. But this kind of army are not the ones who are going to tie God to a covenant. They are going to say, Lord, blessing or no blessing. They are the type who were sent to the vineyard without negotiation. They did not negotiate. When he called the people in the morning, they said, we will only work if you will pay us a denary. He said, you mean... If I don't pay you, you won't work. He said, no pay, no work. And he said, alright. You have tied a covenant with me, go. Later he found some people sitting. And he said, do you love me enough to work in my vineyard? They said, yes. No arrangement. And they entered the vineyard. At the end of the day, even those who came willingly, but at the eleventh hour, got the same reward with those who gave God conditions. And they were angry. And he said, am I not the Lord of the harvest? What did I do that was wrong? That Christianity that gives God conditions before your allegiance must be destroyed is witchcraft coming from the pit of hell. Are you listening to me? 
Job said, Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Men and women who love God with their life, with their soul, with their all. Your passion is not motivated by any loss that you have hidden. Waiting to be manifested. And you say, Lord, I love you and I believe your word. But I am more passionate than any other thing. I'm not just pursuing you. Listen. It's time the church body begins to define what is motivating the apostle to God. Are you listening to me? Because that is what will determine how far we will continue in this journey. If you are pursuing God for money or fame or husband or wife, that means the day you get married, you have no need to pursue again. Are you listening to me? And so, our desire for, for God must come from an eternal plane that nothing in time will be able to quench that hunger. This becomes the platform on which authentic Christianity will spring from. To say, Lord, I love you and I'm committed. Whatever your agenda is, I am interested. I get troubled in my spirit seeing how many believers openly do not care about the agenda of God. The average church in Nigeria is only interested in fulfilling programs and holding conferences and conventions and we name all kinds of things and we are happy. We are meticulous in planning. The ego of the, the man of God or the organizer is at stake. And every kind of artistry and accuracy comes into it. But the one whose agenda we should pursue is left. And the rulers are contending to be lords in the feast. Are you listening to me? And so spiritual growth is not just an act of knowing scripture. It's first coming to a point where you realize that you have no life of your own. Listen to me. That's not the end. That's the beginning. This is the reason why a spiritual man is, he works so much in the presence of God. Because of all of these sacrifices that you have to subject yourself to. Thank you, Jesus. And tonight, what is your motivation? Why are you pursuing God? Why are you running after the things of God? Is it with a passion that will expire when certain things come into your life? Or is it a genuine passion? You say, Lord, I thank you because you will give me a wife and a husband and a car and all of this. But I need you to know that I mean business with you. Are you just pursuing God because you are a student? And then you need him so that you can use him as a ladder towards academic success. And the day you cry and you graduate, you just wave him and say, Lord, there are many others who didn't backslide like me so you can concentrate on them. Lovest thou me more than this? This was a question that he asked Peter. Because, you know, listen, let me tell you something. Peter is, a, is an interesting figure. When Jesus was going to clean the feet of the disciples, Peter said, ah, I respect you so much. I mean, come on, how can you clean my feet? Jesus said, you do not even know what I'm doing. And Peter said, now, just bath me. Now I understand. And he was the one who ran away and betrayed Jesus. To the point that he called a little girl woman because he was trying to defend himself. Hallelujah. And when the hidden agenda that was in their heart, see, eventually, over time, the agenda in their heart for pursuing Jesus began to unravel. When the mother of James and John came to meet Jesus on behalf of her two sons, meaning they were already nursing it, that Jesus will conquer Caesar and now become the king of the Roman Empire. And then at that point, the disciples will become members of the covenant. So, while they were pursuing him, they were already setting their campaign strategies on ground. And they used their mother. And the mother will say, you know I'm a woman. What will you do to my children? Because I got disturbed at the speed with which they left fishing and started following Jesus. They didn't think about it. Jesus was a celebrity. Come and they say, of course, I've always wanted. And then later on, when they found out that this journey was getting too long, they started asking questions. First among themselves. 
This is why you see a preacher 10 years. Diligence in, in God. And then after a while he just says, Lord, at least heaven knows I've tried. Because the motif that was behind the establishment of that ministry is beginning to be revealed. Hallelujah. Are you following me tonight? The light of God is searching our hearts to help us. This is how we grow in the spirit. And then at a particular time, they wanted to motivate themselves in the absence of Jesus because they did not understand what governmental authority is. They did not understand that you only receive results when you are sent. Jesus went with Peter, James, and John and the remaining disciples gathered themselves around and they could not stand the ego and the embarrassment that the crowd around them, they said, look, why wait for Jesus? Can't we take initiatives on our own? And they brought somebody who was epileptic. And they did not understand the order and the trainings in the spirit. And how things are done. They began to assume the position. So that in the absence of Jesus, they might receive a temporary glory. And console their loss before his arrival. And they were disappointed. Because they saw Jesus do it with ease. And they thought it would happen that same way. Here and there in the Bible, you will see men who pursue Jesus Christ. For different reasons. People who wanted to buy anointing. So the, 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 the issue of buying anointing did not start from our generation. When they saw that by the laying on of hands, men were receiving the Holy Ghost. How much? Let me give you. And the church of Christ has turned into a place of gullible men and women of God. Selling what they perceive to be the anointing. And we have a church that will not grow because the price for growth is unbearable. And so we rather prefer to, in, to, to mediate and use the prophetic and the apostolic and whatever can stand to give us a momentary succor. So if I need to find out whether it's the will of God for the job or not, I know that if I'm to follow the regular part of the spirit, I may need to wait upon the Lord in praying and fasting. For three days and I say, why waste my time? When there is a donkey called a prophet and an apostle that we can ride gloriously on. And so we have a result-oriented church. Man of God, tell me what will become of my life. And we do not know him. And we are not even interested in the agenda of God. And let me tell you friends, if God does not raise carpenters to judge the manifestation of these horns, that rise up against Judah, I tell you, there will be casualty in our generation. A time will come when the new age will wipe Christianity if we do not stand. And this is why God is creating platforms like this across the nations, the remnants, who will stand and say, no, this is not the pattern of the Spirit. Are you listening to me? It cannot be church as usual. The average Christian is taught know nothing about Jesus. Do you know, I asked somebody one day, I said, who is Jesus? Born again, spirit filled. I said, who is Jesus? And he was shocked to find out that he did not even know what to tell me about Jesus. He just said, he's the savior of the world. Let me ask you, who is Jesus? No, no, no. Don't give me a, a guesswork or what you got from your Bible. Who is Jesus? Do you know him? If you don't stop telling lies on stage that he's your friend. Because the way we talk about him is as though we drank tea with him. But then you ask him, who is Jesus? Who is the Holy Ghost? Amazing that the church does not even know the Holy Ghost. Scholars know more about the Holy Ghost than the church. They have researched as critics. And come up with facts that the church is not even aware. We are not interested. The message about Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the kingdom and the life of God. The priority and the agenda of the Father that should be the pivot of the operation of every church is absent. And we have replaced it with all kinds of activities. Making money, promoting people. And you see people trying to be zealous in church. And all they are looking for is the name deacon or pastor. And that becomes our ultimate satisfaction. 
there needs to be a redefinition of what has been motivating us in our pursuit for God. No wonder at every challenge many believers stand and give up. But the Bible says if your strength fails you in the day of battle, that means you did not gather strength. Hallelujah. If I were the pastor of many churches, after this service, they will, they will have a board meeting about me. I say, we don't like this kind of thing. You don't come and spoil our minds. Read about Jesus Christ. Elijah was called the troublemaker in Israel. And right now you have believers who come into a building. and say, why didn't they put AC? Kai. I'm sweating and I'm getting inconvenienced. But students can stand to collect scholarship in front of guidance and counseling. In the hot sun, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. You are determined to get it. No matter what happens, you stand on that line. You maintain your position. They want to push you. You say, I'm not going anywhere. They say, you are a lady. You say, I know. I will show you I'm a lady of Jesus. We, 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 so we have that spirit of determination. But when it comes to the things of the spirit, you hold a service after one hour, 30 minutes, everybody's looking at their watch. And it's not like they have what, something to do afterwards. Because immediately after the meeting, you see them greeting one another for hours. So why the hurry? What is motivating us? What drives our pursuit for God? Are we passionate? When Jesus came, he said, listen, this is my meat. In other words, I derive satisfaction in this. To do the will of the Father. He said, I must walk the, him, the works of him that sent me while it is day. He placed urgency on his assignment for the night coming. When no man can walk again. Is there an urgency in your spirit to pursue God? Hallelujah. And then the second group of people in church that we have are those who have pressed unto God to a measure and then got to that measure and based on what we want to call movements, holiness movement, word of faith movement, charismatic movement, the moment you contend to the point that you enter the, the revelations of a movement, you are satisfied. And there is no pressure upon our spirits to contend for greater height. Not realizing that there are certain scrolls that have been closed. That if we will contend, it will be open unto us. And we will open up new revelations about God. And be a blessing to the body. So I ask you a question tonight under God. Are you really interested in the agenda of the Father? What are you really... Define what motivates you. Heaven... Wife, money, CGPA, a job. At what point will you rest and say, Kai, I've tried in this Christian journey. You must define it right now. I will go. I will go. Wherever you lead me. Yeah. I will go I will go I will go Wherever you lead me I will go Can that be the anthem of your life? That when people ask you and say what is your plan and goal in life? You will first tell them that all that I'm about to tell you is a derivative of what God has committed unto me. I did not cook, sit down and cook up any ambition for myself. Because I am bound by an oath to my Savior that I will stand and live for Him. I have brought myself willingly under the government and the sovereign rule of the King. And I will not compromise. Before I continue, we are going to pray for five minutes. 
And that prayer, listen to me, please. Don't bow your head. We are not bowing heads here. We are going to pray audibly. Hallelujah. And the prayer is going to say, Lord, I lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. You will hear us preach this again and again. I will bow to you, to no other. We are going to repent before we continue in this service. The first repentance is to say, Lord, I'm ashamed to find out that there has been a hidden loss that has been motivating my pursuit for you. But tonight I repent. Are you listening to me? You are going to pray. Because you know I'm not lying. I pray this to God every time. I say, Lord, if there is any other reason aside from my love for you, why I pursue you, judge it, prune it, and bring me to a point where I become a dead man without you. Is that your prayer? We are going to pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I lay down idols. I cannot deny that I have needs. But Lord, I have let these needs to motivate my love for you. Come on, pray. Lord, hidden in me is the ability to want faith. I cannot deny it. And while it is not bad, I have allowed it to motivate my pursuit. Lord, I've been crying for spiritual gifts because I don't want to. I've suffered inferiority complex. And so I'm looking for what will eat it away. And unfortunately, I allowed it to slip and become my motivation for you. Lift your voice and pray. Katakata palada bakai, lepro sote berere levos, kapate prosto pende kete balada ba, rapa kasto prosto pende keta. Pray, say Lord, I came here with a need, but Lord, in the light of Your Word, if I will be honest with myself, I'm just pursuing You. The hunger increased simply because I needed a solution. Not because I loved you. Not because I was passionate about your agenda. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. I have made you too small in my eyes. We are still praying. Oh Lord. Forgive me And I have believed in a lie That you are unable to help me But tonight in Koinonia But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong Heal my heart and show yourself strong and in my heart and with my song oh lord be mad come on magnify him above your knees oh lord be magnified be magnified be magnified oh lord
for God will tell in your desire for evangelism your passion for God will tell in how much you give to the house of God your desire will tell how much you pray for the house of God your desire will tell in how much you love the word of God how much you love his spirit we are still praying five minutes say Lord search my heart I am not pretending tonight I cannot lie. There are idols in my heart. I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. But Lord, if you do not give me certain things after some time, I may begin to reconsider my passion. Help me tonight. I came to Koinonia for my passion to be renewed. Help me. I want to grow. Help me. Lord I'm sorry I've taken your pursuit and replaced it with many things say Lord I didn't even know when certain desires overtook a genuine passion I was so distracted by the burdens upon me that I did not realize that I had missed out on a genuine passion genuine passion not tied to marriage not tied to money not tied to fame not tied to ministry, not tied to anointing. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ. Christ. Christ in me. Christ above me, Christ before me, Christ by my side, my motivation, the beginning, the end. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen. 
God is re-examining the foundations from which our pursuit for Christ is hinged on. Because the Bible says, if the foundation, it says, if the foundation be destroyed. Are you listening to me? We are still praying. I have not finished the teaching. But I just sense in my spirit to sing one more song. It's all about you. It's all about you. If you don't believe it, don't sing it yet. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. When you get the revelation, you can join. But for as many who mean it, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus. Hey. It's all about you. It's all about you. of standing for Jesus in the presence of your friends is because you are not yet convinced. That's why you cannot share Jesus with others. You are afraid of the embarrassment. You are conscious of your beauty. That's an idol. You are conscious of it. Lest it will kill an opportunity to be in a relationship. You cannot share Christ with your business partner, with your lecturer. We have replaced him with different things in our hearts. So every time Satan comes, he comes projecting your loss first and foremost. So that you cannot repeat. Lord help us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you are here. Please be seated and let's continue. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand that before the day of the Lord, listen to me, the spirit of Elijah, Malachi 4, before the spirit, before the day of the Lord, the spirit spirit of Elijah will be sent forth to prepare the way. And so before Jesus came, the spirit of Elijah was sent forth. And he began to prepare the way. How was he preparing the way? Calling the people to realize how bad they had fallen. Not because he could redeem them. Baptism at that time was not a sign of new birth. It was an indication that they would be interested in what Jesus was coming to offer. So as many who were convicted by his teaching prepared their hearts so that when the Messiah showed up they would not resist him. For John himself did not have any power to save any man. But he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He was an echo. And right now that same spirit of Elijah has been released upon the body of Christ. To expose the works of iniquity and to bring the sons of God into righteousness. And this is what is happening across every church and every denomination that truly names the name of Christ. It's a manifestation of this prophetic spirit that is able to receive of the things of God and communicate it fearlessly. This is how your Christianity will last. So that 30 years from now you will raise your children in the fear of the Lord. They will know no other doctrine and no other gospel. By 
by default they will they will be built knowing that they love God and they have a passion for him and him alone hallelujah Romans chapter 8 when the Holy Ghost brings you to this position the next thing that happens is he begins to subject you through different dealings and trainings please listen this is important this is the principle the way God prepares his army and the way hallelujah now please look up one is not a tragedy but if we don't do anything about it it will become an old wine hallelujah there was a time in the body of Christ when our pursuit was for Rema praise God please listen to me Rema and the quality of your ministry was proportional to the depth of Rema insight into scripture hallelujah how you could compare scripture with scripture how you could quote whole chapters hallelujah nothing wrong in that we gave awards to people for quoting chapters and chapters of scripture but I needed to know that in the progression of the dealings of God listen the Holy Ghost begins by exposing you to the knowledge of God are you listening to me he brings you to that point where you begin to know about God through the scripture you begin to browse through scripture and see the character of God and see his life and his nature and his principles but can I tell you something and this is where a lot of the church body need to upgrade their life and anytime I say this people get offended I don't castigate ministers but I am the voice that must echo the things that I hear in the spirit are you listening to me I don't have a problem with any church in fact there is no channel I don't watch but listen to me let me tell you something when you say I'm born again I'm a new creation in Christ hallelujah that settles it I need you to know listen to me that is not the fault of those who have brought this revelation and it's not a lie but that is not all there is are you listening to me it's not a lie because scripture cannot be broken however if that is the only perspective that is seen in the body then there is no completion are you following me now and so there was a an error and a dispensation where our fathers contended and pressed in the spirit and they came into that dimension where they began to understand that wow from scripture i'm free from condemnation are you listening to me i'm free but the bible says knowledge shall increase meaning it was not supposed to stop with that discovery are you listening to me that is a sign of a healthy christian that there is progression into the depths of the spirit the bible says we see in part and according to that part we prophesy so when god enlarges that which you see you begin to prophesy but many people have camped around certain revelations and will fight anything that looks above it calling it error are you listening to me there are many people who have been taught in church that there's nothing like demons nothing like satan the only demon you have is in your mind but that's not true well for those who grew up under cnn but for those who my father's mother was a traditionalist are you listening to me so i'm not trying to guess that satan exists it's one thing to believe he exists it's another thing to believe he has power over you that is where it's faulty are you listening to me but for you to just kick away and say forget it there's no demon anywhere ah, be careful because many of the people who are speaking will later on find out the reason why they are stunted in their life and will not make advancement a number of them have discovered it but their arrogance will not allow them to admit that they have seen a greater light and so they would rather prefer to come in what they believe to be the final revelation of the dimension of god that is given to man when you read a lot of kenneth Hagin's books there are many things written in that book that you might not totally agree with right now is that correct 
that was because during Kenneth Hagin's time, the level and the operation of the spirit and the truths that were opened there was what he received and documented. So you cannot criticize him. But at the same time, in as much as we call him a general, we cannot stop at that level. Are you listening to me? So I cannot build a camp around Kenneth Hagin and say all that he taught, the thing that was moving the church was physical manifestation, gold dust, silver dust. Everybody will bring every kind of thing. Your watch, the, the silver on your watch will scratch on your hand and say, see, gold dust. And it was not wrong. Listen to me. But the Holy Ghost was studying the way we were responding to it. The moment it would become an idol, he seized that experience so that we will continue with the next dealings of the Spirit. But where you encamp around gold dust, and you find your ministry around gold dust and oil and so on and so forth, then there will be trouble. Because you will resist those who are progressing in the spirit. And you will try to create many teachings to prove that they are in error. Not knowing that you are the one who is taunted. And even when the Holy Ghost is ministering to you, a time will come, the light will be too bright, you cannot explain. And so you will begin to get angry. Because the people are not stupid. The Bible says it will happen to us as it happened in Nepta and Zebulun. It said the people in Nepta and Zebulun, there was a prophecy. It says those who are in darkness, they have seen a great light. Not a light, a great light. So it will happen. A great light. One characteristic of a healthy church is the ability to transit with the Spirit. But when the man of God takes the place of God and makes himself the final authority in the church, he is unable to adjust because his ego will not be able to accommodate the explanations he has to give for his transition in the Spirit. Transition in the spirit is not, is not a thing of embarrassment. Hallelujah. There are ministers who stop their members from reading some books because of insecurity. They want to keep the members around what they believe is the full and universal counsel of God. And I hear a lot of ministers teach with such arrogance and they do not know that there are other dimensions that are being opened up. There are many who did not stop in yesterday's wine. They kept contending. And God is opening greater doors. And those doors, just like in 2005, when the revival came to the campus about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and what we know today to be new creation realities. It happened in 2005. And that was the time when we were coming into this knowledge. We didn't even know these things. We were coming into this knowledge. The revelation of Kenyon's teachings. The revelation of Pastor Chris's teachings. I mean, I was so blessed. I'll never forget how many times we lock ourselves. Boy, we're stepping into things in the anointing. Those times, if someone fell on the floor, you will run and catch the person and take him to sick bay. Because you are not sure what happened. But right now, even in your prayer group, three people, even unbelievers now have acclimatized to the fact that there is a manifestation of the Spirit and people can fall. But we cannot stop there. And so what is there? What else is there to look? Because the mistake that many of us are making in our churches and the rest is we are encamping around an experience and will not move. As See, a man of God is not the one who is supposed to look at the people. He's supposed to set his eyes on the cloud. The moment the cloud begins to motion movement, he alerts the people and says the cloud is moving. Begin to follow him. Are you listening to me? Because at that time, we were taught that if there is no instant manifestation in your life, something was wrong with your faith. And so while the Holy Ghost was trying to deal with us and taking us through processes that will bring us into maturity, those teachings were, were wrestling His ministry in our lives. But as an act of God's grace, we're able to switch and to align. And to realize that in Hebrews 11, there were women who raised their dead back. And women, those times we could not explain what happens if a family dies. Hallelujah. We don't know what message to tell them. Because we have been taught you are supposed to stand and live forever. And any death is a sign of weakness and Satan and so on and so forth. But that was good to a measure. But it is not applicable today. 
there must need to be a growth. And so we read from scripture by the Holy Ghost how that some people died. Are you listening to me? Without receiving the promise. And he said other people raised their dead back to life. He joined all the experiences and called it faith. So we began to question the things that we had been believing. Not to scorn the people, but to say, look, where they put full stop is supposed to be a comma. There are many of you, there are experiences God is giving you. You have not found the confirmation yet. I hope we have time, wherever we can stop today. And every time you go to your pastor, they tell you, no, this kind of thing, we, we don't like it. You see that? It is a new operation. It's the manifestation of the new wine. It must be discerned in an atmosphere where people have ears and they can tell you, although this is strange, we confirm by the Spirit that this is an operation of the Lord. Fire on. Many of you have stunted your spiritual growth because of different messages you have heard. For instance, I know people who say, just pray for five minutes and pray for ten minutes. You are a king. Speak it once. <laughs> Brother, let me tell you the truth. If that is how you want to raise your Christianity, there will be a bitter casualty that will teach you a lesson that may take decades for you to recover from. Because the Bible gives us the character of a man of prayer. He said Elijah was a man of like passion. He said he prayed earnestly. Are you listening to me? So, there is nothing wrong in receiving the teachings that you have. But I'm only saying, we salute the generals. I respect every man of God. I mention them by name. They have been impacts to our lives. Until today, we still listen to them. Forever they remain generals. They have entered the hallmark of grace. However, there is a fresh mandate upon our generation. Are you listening to me? And according to the measure of grace that is coming upon us, we cannot use the new discoveries we are having to mock them. For that will be immaturity. But at the same time, we will not refuse to progress because we want to pay our homage and allegiance to their doctrines. Are you growing tonight? Because if I don't balance this, many of you will now stand and watch some of our fathers and hear their revelation like I see a lot of people do and they just laugh. They say, I've left this realm. When you find yourself doing that, you are a child. It's not demon possession. The remedy is just to grow up. Are you listening to me? I have tapes and tapes. I follow the men of God attentively because, listen, although Eli's eye was dim, it was Eli who told Samuel that it was the voice of God. Eli was a type of our fathers, although their eyes are getting dim, not because they are backsliding, but their dispensation and the blueprint of their prophetic agenda is coming to an end. So there is a mantle transfer in the spirit, although they may, to some of you, not look relevant. We approach them with discretion. One leg we are approaching the spirit and saying, Holy Ghost, we are trusting you, and then we are receiving direction. You see the balance. So you don't begin to use your revelation and say, Ah. This ministry, they just teach on this and that and that. No, we appreciate them and we salute them forever they are called generals. Compared to them, we are only but toddlers rising up in the spirit. However, he told Jeremiah, do not be afraid of the people and say, I am young. For I will put my words in your mouth. He said, go and speak. So there is an emergence of people. We will be persecuted because of our age and because we are not conforming to the mold of religion. How be it there is a new wine and the one who sent us will stand to defend us. This is why you will see a lot of young people doing supernatural things for God. But then if we are careful and we are trained enough, we will realize that in the midst of all of these things we ought to give God glory. Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor, change your full stop to a comma. Say it one more time, change your full stop to a comma. Do not reject the operations of the Spirit. Open up yourself. Please, don't be caught up in that thing, my church, my pastor. 
this is what we believe. God is leading you to a book in the bookstore. It may be by an author you don't like. There's nobody I don't watch. Let your mind grow while nobody. If I cannot learn anything, at least I can learn diligence in ministry. So you must maintain a posture. Are you listening to me? So the dealings of the Spirit, when the Holy Ghost begins to walk and shed off a lot of religion from our lives. Follow me to Romans, please. Let's see how far we can get and then we'll pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we pray in tongues for two minutes? Just seated. Go ahead and pray in tongues. Get used to it. The Bible says, these signs will follow them. That means when the authentic church arises by grace, this will be part of the signs. Like I said, there are many of you who probably may be here and have a problem with what we are doing. Don't reject it. Just open up your heart and seek understanding. We are loving enough to explain. Lord let me grow Lord let me grow Lord let me grow In the name of Jesus I refuse to lag behind Hallelujah The first thing that happens to you Hallelujah The work of a believer Is that By acknowledging That Jesus is Savior Over your life And His Lordship The Bible makes us to understand That the Spirit of God Comes to live in you Hallelujah The Bible says He that is joined to Christ is what? One Spirit So there is a oneness that happens from the realm of your spirit. What is the result? Faith is imparted in you. And suddenly, you begin to gain meaning over spiritual things. The things you would have rejected. Because the spirit of God lives in you. He begins to direct you. Now watch this. You will read in your Bible. As you progress in this journey. Now you are born again. And then you begin to read in your Bible. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Wonderful. Then you find another one. You have been anointed to heal the sick, to cast out devils. Wonderful. You keep noting the scripture. Hallelujah. By the time you have 30 or 40 beautiful scriptures, now you will, you will rise up based on the confidence of those scriptures God will not fail hallelujah then your first attempt on a man on a wheelchair he doesn't stand and then a question begins to brew in your heart what happened hallelujah and then you saw that you are the head and not the tail then your results came out and you saw a carryover and you said well uh Uh, God is just something is dead. you just leave the question mark there and then some of us go to our men of God and say please what meaneth these things I'm not getting it the things I see in scripture and the manifestation in my life is creating a contrast and most of us men of God all we tell God's innocent people because that is the limitation of the perspective that we see you don't have faith it's not enough stir up your faith if his faith is you walk now the people stay. How do I stay? And they get books. And they keep reading. They read different kinds of books. Volumes of books. To the point that they can recite the books. And then they don't see a noticeable improvement in their life. And they come back. And then we are unable to give them answers. Listen to me. The journey of a believer. The moment you give your heart to the Lord. Listen. You begin to progress from knowing God. 
to entering into an experiential walk with him. Are you listening to me? And the experience of God with a man cannot be taught. It is unique. It is a unique dealing. Are you listening to me? Now, through those experiences, your convictions about the things you see in the world begin to crystallize and gain substance. Are you listening to me? The first area of argument is your mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 5, let's look at it quickly. Romans 8 from verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do what? They do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. He said for to be carnally minded. That means to be ruled by your senses. To be ruled by your emotions. To be ruled by the things you see, the things you hear. And all of these things. The Bible says to be ruled by them. Any other thing other than Christ is death. In other words, it is an effort in futility. Hallelujah. And so your mind begins to wrestle the things of God. Because when God steps into your life, listen, He is not seeking a space. He is seeking the whole. He is not seeking a part of you. And say, okay, other things. Uh -uh. The moment He stands there, He begins to wrestle and push every other thing. Hallelujah. And that's where the willing submission of a believer begins. Listen to me. You can choose where to stop in your spiritual journey by saying, Lord, I've tried and I've come thus far. This one will not go. God will begin to touch them. One. Are you ready to listen to me? So you love God so much. And then one day God will say, empty your account. You say, Abba God, I bind, I reject that demon. He has taught something. He's bringing your finances into obedience with Christ. Then he touches your, your uncle who sent you money all the time. Say, Lord, my faith is working. Now he doesn't send you money. And what happens? God, eh, my faith is still working. After two months, you really find out that the one you've been trusting was not God. Hallelujah. And then he keeps touching those things until he comes to a point where he is exalted king. I like a song that says, He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. You know that song? He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. Powerful song. So the Holy Ghost begins to wrestle your flesh. What happens? You are born again. And although you are shouting, but the issue of women, you have not, you have not surrendered that part. So there is half Babylon, half. You are, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And you are preaching. Hallelujah. But then you sit down and start remembering those days where you, in the, you are in the world. And every lady that passes around you, if any guy stands, you say, you are covering my view, please. There is a contention. This is what the Bible is telling us. Are you following me now? Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. It now begins to tell us, it said, now I say then, walk in the spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. He said, for the flesh lusted after the spirit. And the spirit after the flesh. And both of them are consistently under contention. And then although you are born again, you find out that you are still involved in masturbation and certain things. You may not tell people, but these are contentions. You are praying about it. I'm showing you the progression. Then you begin to see every kind of thing. When you are praying before God, and you are praying in tongues, you begin to see God brings out the state of your heart. Envy, lust, jealousy. You say, Lord, me? Me? I'm a new creation. I'm born again. But then you are seeing your old man. Cain is alive and strong. Wrestling with Abel. And because Cain is the elder brother of Abel. That flesh, it had gained dominance in your mind. Now Abel wants to come and take his place. 
And so there is a contention. Are you listening to me? The old man does not want to give way. The old man does not want to give way. And then Satan gives you an alternative. He says, look, there is something called the grace of God and God's mercy. Why don't you wrap yourself around that revelation and let everything go? And so you are laughing. You are saying, hallelujah, all things are working well. But you sleep in the night and people come and press you and sleep with you. You get up in the morning and it's not a problem. You will never tell anybody. You are just smiling. But these are questions you are asking. And say, what is wrong with my new creation status? And God is saying, no, it's a journey. Your mind is giving room for Satan to find expression in your life. And you are unable to lay down everything. Are you listening to me? You love God, it does not mean you are a devil. Don't let anybody condemn you, but you must not condone your state. You must do something about it. Hallelujah. You never believed you could steal. One day, in the heat of hunger, you just saw 100 naira wanting to take it. The Holy Ghost told you it's your roommate's own. You can't say you didn't hear him. And he said, Lord, the flesh contending with the spirit. And he said, does it really matter? Lord, if I ask her, she will give me. So what's the difference? God is saying, ask them. Because there is a protocol in the spirit. And you just whistle and squeeze out and carry the hundred naira. You buy bonds and you eat. And God keeps quiet. It does not mean he's endorsing you. He's only encouraging you. Because a time will come, his light will shine in that area of your life. While men slept, the enemy planted tears among the wheat. And the people who were with the husband man said, should we begin to walk? He said, no. In the process of pruning it, you will remove some things. So let them go. There is a level you get to, then God will say, all right, about this issue of masturbation, it's been two years. And uh, although you have been healing the sick, like, can we deal with it now? He said, oh, I'm a new creation. What kind of embarrassment is this? Oh Lord, don't bring up this issue. And Satan begins to give you an excuse. We have a church that is so dignified and we cannot open up ourselves before God because we think it's an act of weakness. Can I tell you something, friends? If you must grow and be true, if you, if you must grow and be mature and stand in truth, then you must open up your heart and let the Holy Spirit examine your mind and prune out everything that does not conform to Christ. Hallelujah. While that is happening, you will seem to be standing in one place in your journey. Other people have started ministry since they are going. They are already on air. You are there cleaning out a lot of things. Are you listening to me? Because God is saying the kind of army I need to present. And your colleague who you started laboring in the spirit together has seven branches now. And the guy looks at you and says, are you, there's an urgency in the spirit. Let's run. The harvest is wide. And he said, are you prepared? Guys, are you joking? Meanwhile, his choir ladies cannot rest again. Because the realm of the spirit does not know whether you are apostle or prophet. And so in the middle of the teachings, what happens? Cain, you look at a beautiful lady, patience. How? And then you are preaching. And then Cain says, this side again. And you look. And you say, I have a prophetic word for you. Now, it's not your fault. You love the Lord. But you did not stay sufficient for the Holy Ghost to begin to take over your mind. So, although you are prophesying, suddenly, you are a prophet and you notice that Sam is the general manager of a bank. And by prophetic insight, you are giving access to his account number. Say, Sam, stand up. While you say stand up, the message that is coming from God is that you walk steadfastly. But you add command to where God stops and Cain rides up with the prophecy. He says, more so, God is telling you to drop an amount. And because of the accuracy of your delivery, you are consoled and you think it is God. Are you listening to me? And so based on it, you open a ministry. 
but then you find out that there are many things although before people you are great in the spirit you weigh very small because you have refused to stay in the spirit and then your members begin to contend for truth and they come to a point where they begin to discern that something is wrong although these guys anointed and have the gift of the spirit we do not see the character that represents the posture of a matured man in the spirit then you begin to come up with all kinds of rules be quiet and don't challenge authority whatever we give you God will not talk to you people except he comes to us. Have you had teachings like that? That's lack of fire in progress, brothers. Because the Bible is very explicitly clear. Mm, this is what you get in Koinonia. We want us to be strong. Listen, I trust the Lord that the least person among us will be as strong as David. We won't lie to you. That's why we hold miracle services. Is that correct? And you come, we don't bug you with all these things. We just pray. But when it comes to building, watch me. There was a day, now I'm careful to say this, some years ago, the Lord told me that I should not open my Bible for one week. And I did not understand. Could that be the Spirit of the Lord or not? But I eventually found out that it was God. And God gave me the reason. He said, Son, every meeting that happens, you are going. Like many of you are here with your notebooks. It takes something in your head to be the head. You know how Bishop Oedeko writes powerful statements. Say something in your head to be the head. Now he's writing. You are judging. He's speaking from a depth of revelation. You just want Rema. And he said, boy, if I preach on this in my Thursday fellowship, they will know that I'm not an ordinary person. Now you are getting these things. He's speaking from the bowels of the spirit. But it came to you just as knowledge. Rema. Are you listening to me? And now you are writing it. And God told me, he said, son, you have gotten many things that can move you forward, but you are not moving forward. You are junking your head with knowledge. Close your Bible and let's begin to bring you into the experience of these revelations that you had. So I didn't say, you see, it's my unique dealing. That's why I can't write a book about it. Are you listening to me? And God began to open me up. I remember that's when God began to teach me on character. Look, let me tell you, I was walking in the anointing of the Spirit in a way you cannot imagine. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit asked me, this is the experiential dealing now. I'm teaching you how the Holy Ghost trains you. He begins to subject you through personalized experience that only you can tell. The only thing is when you share the experience with another person, you will find out that although the, the patterns of dealings are different according to what he wants you to become, but you see that there is a similarity of objectives, what he's trying to achieve. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost made me to draw a diagram of the fruit of the Spirit versus their manifestation in my life. Personalized dealings. He is training me. He is now giving life to the head knowledge I've had of Scripture. I knew it so well. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I knew this in, right from Sunday school. But now there was, it was now time for the reality. And let me tell you something. For the first time in my life, my ego was torn to my knees. I was shocked to find out that less than 10% of the fruit of the Spirit was alive and working. Although I was anointed, although we were praying for people, although we had gone for crusades, I said, Ah, Lord, you have to help me. Thank God it's only me and you that is seeing this thing. Let's flog it out right now. Are you listening to me? Do not be embarrassed. When God calls you to your knees as a general, it's not a symbol of shame. He's pulling you to lift you. So don't be embarrassed to find out that there is an issue you need to flog out in your life. Don't let religion lie to you and say it's all over. Walk out that soteria, that salvation with fear, reverence for God and with trembling because it has consequences if you leave it. Hallelujah. And when I began to do that, I saw improvements in my life. And people were happy. 
When I went for ministration, they said, we have a very humble servant of God. And I could imagine the Holy Spirit saying, now you, are you not enjoying the blessings? I thought that was over. Later on again, he said, there's part two of that character deal. And he gave me another deal. And I found out I failed flawlessly. Although you people can see me and say, wow, great man of God. It's only me and God that knows the dealings and the levels. Are you listening to me? Many preachers will not tell you this because they stand as omniscient, omnipotent, and omni whatever. And let me tell you, if they don't take steps, they will be embarrassed. Because the realm of the spirit has no apology for what your members call you. You begin to contend for the experience. Listen, and in that contention, you begin to know the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? You begin to know the Holy Ghost. There are certain promptings of the Spirit that come upon me to know the kinds of anointings that are in a place. I cannot teach you. I can only explain. It's my personalized dealing. In the place of prayer, there is a way and a manner that the Holy Ghost moves upon me that I know that I've hidden something in the Spirit. And I know that this prayer has been answered. Are you listening to me? There is a way I can sense danger. If somebody wants to call me, maybe to pray for the sick. Sometimes, few minutes before that time, I suddenly sense the anointing of the Spirit. And I sense the presence of healing angels. How did I learn that? The experiential dealings of the Spirit. This is how a believer grows. One day you are praying, suddenly your tongues begin to change. That's your first time of encountering it. And then you are saying, what is happening? Suddenly I found out that I cannot even talk again. I'm voicing but I'm not speaking. These are questions. The Holy Ghost is luring you deeper with these experiences. People may reject it but you know. Suddenly you, you are praying and you begin to sense the presence of people. You know that you are not alone in that room. And now your spirit is being trained. It's a customized dealing. This is not the type. There are many of you while I'm speaking right now. The first time I was speaking, you were caught up in the spirit. You didn't even know that it was a spiritual experience. Suddenly you found out that we are sharing the grace. And you just smiled. You went back home quietly. And then you ended that dealing. Instead of you to begin to contend with the spirit. Every time you prayed, you would lie down and see something that would happen exactly the next day. You trivialized it. But after seeing it two or three times, the Holy Ghost is saying, this is part of the tools you will need as my army. And so begin to take note of it. I sleep with notebooks. I sleep with my Bible, my notebooks, and my pen. Because at every time, you see, so you begin to walk with the Spirit. And you come to a point where you can look at someone and be able to help the person out of the abundance of your experience. Are you listening to me? The atmosphere of your spirit is alive. Now your mind begins to submit gradually but surely to the lordship of the spirit. You begin to imbibe his word. His word now, the, the Holy Spirit begins to orchestrate occasions that will make the word be living and active in your life. So it's no longer just a logos here. It has become true. Are you listening to me? And then one time you will have cause. And your father or your mother will not send you money. And the Holy Ghost will say, I want to show you a dimension of me that is accessible. I want to train you and build you. And then he says, now depend on me. Get up and go to your friend's room. As you are stepping into your friend's room, you see him with an envelope of 5,000. He says, the Lord was leading me. And you say, so that dealing I thought was my mind was the Holy Ghost. You are growing. There is a progression. Are you listening to me? There is a progression. Suddenly you sit down and you sense, guys, something is wrong. And you just tell your colleague, let's pray. Let's pray. Five minutes later they call. And they say someone had a ghastly motor accident and he would have died. And God said, note that impression. I will make reference to it again. Your customized dealings with the Spirit. This is how a Christian becomes a mature person. Because over time, you begin to gather these things and the Holy Ghost begins to shed light and He begins to teach you. So, prayer becomes exciting not because you want to go and do religion. You anticipate a new experience. And so you are praying and wondering what next will the Holy Ghost do. Suddenly you are praying on your own. The next thing you wake up and find out 
that you were on the floor. When you fell, you did not know. You thought you were too praying, but suddenly you found out that you had been in a vision for a long time. And you said, Lord, what, what is going on in my life? The dealings. Are you learning something, please? Then you begin to pray. Then you begin to build. There are times that you are sleeping and God gives you a dream and you get up and there is no direct application of that dream in your life. The dream was an explosion of your mind and your spirit to acclimatize with the dealings of God so that scripture will now begin to make sense based on the things you have visualized in your dreams. So you find yourself walking on water and in that dream, a lot of people say, Mami water, calm down. Don't just call everything Satan. You find yourself walking with Jesus on water in a dream. He is giving you the feeling so that when you come back and open that scripture, light that never entered you will now enter you. There are times in the dream you see yourself laying hands on the sick and you have the feeling of victory, the manifestation of faith. And every time God will preserve that memory in your mind so that the next time you see somebody in a wheelchair, you have that same feeling. And it will, end, it will help the anointing to flow in your life. And suddenly for the first time, it will be like a dream. Are you following me tonight? The dealings of the Spirit. Bringing the knowledge of God into the experience of God for you. Then you begin to speak. You are understanding the operations of the Spirit. Now when you stand to preach, listen, you will not just talk as if you are talking. Your convictions are getting stronger. Listen, when you experience God, that's the only condition that you can die for Him. It's not by confession. Are you listening to me? Stand up, sweetheart, my dear. Look at me. If I call you a man, what will you do about it? There are too many experiences in your life that have crystallized in your spirit, soul, and body that you are a lady. Is that correct? For instance, men don't wear with one except there's something wrong with them. Except there is a drastic shortage of the dealings of the spirit in their lives. Please sit down. Now, this is a lady. If you give birth to a baby, listen, do you know if you separate a baby from any other person and you keep telling that baby you are a boy, you are a boy, although she's a lady, she will grow up knowing and thinking and acting like a man. Because the first experience she receives is on account of what you are speaking to her. Are you listening to me? That's why God designed the trainings of ladies and men to be such that no man can deceive another. the guy becomes a teenager, suddenly his voice is getting husky. Final betrayal. Nothing can deceive him that he's a lady. And then he sees mustache on his face. But all these things begin to tell him, look, Mr. Man, you are not a lady. And then, what are they doing? There are memories in his mind. And then he comes to a point where he's convinced and he can die believing that he's a man. Such that when Americans are saying right now, uh, there are factors we need to look at to ascertain whether a man is a man or a woman. You say you are on your own. I know and I am persuaded that I am a man. This is how it must be. But when you do not walk with the Spirit, and this is the ministry of the fivefold, to bring us to a point where we create the roadmap. Listen, what we do is we plant and we water, but it's your dealings with God that brings increase in your life. Are you listening to me? Our job is to open up a portal and lead you and say go. And then you begin to experience certain dimensions of God. You have been reading every time. The Bible talks about tithing. And then you have been saying, wow. If they ask you in Sunday school, you answer. Discipleship, you answer. CRS, you answer and you do very well. And then one day God begins to tell you, alright, you've been reading this thing. When will you put it to work? Experience. Knowledge translating into experience. Now you come out here and stand and you drop the tithe. And listen to me. God will oftentimes 
cause the result to happen instantly so that you can see the difference. You are just dropping it and the next time it may not happen like that all the time. This is what happens to new converts. Every prayer is answered. Before they pray to be answered. And they are like, man, this Christianity, that means most Christians are lazy. Then one day you pray and it's not answered that fast. And God will say, alright, uh, I was just helping you to be encouraged. So that should in case you don't get an answered prayer, you know you once had one. And you can follow me. Then he begins to teach you. You want to be have you seen many believers who say I just got saved, I got filled with the Holy Spirit I started praying for the sick immediately and truly they were healed ask them after 5 years whether they continued it was a motivation God is smart, he knows how to encourage you, it was a bonus to encourage you that look you are seeing believers praying and fasting you didn't pray, you didn't fast, Rema just came and you say if this is how it is then I can be a preacher and then one day you are starved of revelation the Bible becomes a blank page from Genesis to Revelation and then he begins to teach you the principle of receiving from the spirit then you begin to honor the people you have once criticized and say oh I respect your fast you know you are not wasting your time a body that becomes mature not just in knowledge but in experience that's why I like our mothers. They have gone through childbirth. They have escaped accidents. So whenever they are talking about the faithfulness of God, no matter whether they are not concerned whether I can place well or not, you just raise a song. Even if it's, Oh, come, oh, ye faithful. They just close their eyes. Because it's a reflection of their experience. They have come to know God. When they were giving birth to the third child, they almost died. And they called on his name and he brought salvation. So whenever they read and they say, the Lord is my strength and my life, they have an experience that can relate to that knowledge. And for them it's not waste. Hmm. Are you listening to me? A woman who has five children and four died in an accident. And then, see, this is one of the reasons why when you hear a man who has experienced God, when he speaks, you will cry. Because he's speaking from the depth of his experience. I remember listening to Reverend Dr. Umaupai. Lost his children. After a crusade. After a crusade. His children drowned and died. He had to start a new family again. So when he reads the book of Job. And Job said, though he slay me. He will say yes. Because there is an experience. He has gotten that dimension of God. And nobody will take it have you gotten the experience for the revelations you are shouting about? For that may be the missing link. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you come to a point where you experience certain things. Don't waste your experiences. Let the Holy Ghost use them as a training ground to make you mature. That's why the Bible says, Count it all joy when you face diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith will produce patience. And let patience have its full cause. There is an end. It will make you become something. When you come to Koinonia, there are different kinds of worshippers. Those who have experienced what the worship people are singing. Are you following me now? That's why when who raised worship, Sam, come. If Sam, if Sam comes to stand here and sing and say, um, Lord, I give you my heart. If there is no experience to validate that revelation, you will know because there is an absence of truth. Have your way in me. Lord, even if he's kneeling down, you just know that there is a separation between this man and the spirit of this song. And experience has not brought it into light. Hallelujah. But if you waited 10 years before getting admission, and he said, Lord, I love you. And he says, Lord, I give you my heart. You cannot explain. It may not even be his voice. His experience is doing something to your spirit. Deep is calling on to deep. Have your way in me. That's why he can compose other versions and not care about what you are thinking. 
because those versions relate to his experience. When he, that's why you see, when whenever we say sing in the spirit or express yourself to the Lord, some people just stand. It's not your fault. You've never had to look for school fees by yourself. You've never had to trust God for his faithfulness. You've never had to. You are too innocent. There is no experience. So the Bible is just like a book and you just know the memory verses. But somebody who's, whose name came out in part list has an experience about the faithfulness of God. Somebody whose mother was almost dying of childbirth and they had to come together praying day and night knows that there are demons in the village and that prayer can conquer Satan. So while you are talking English on stage, that revelation, the memory of the times you have to spend to travel, that memory is too deep for your deceits to just take him out. That becomes the platform for a healthy prayer life. So right now, your prayer life is not founded upon intimidation from your colleagues. There is an experience that has provoked you to the place of prayer. And you know you must remain there as a matter of life and death. Hallelujah. And then the Bible. Have you ever had certain experiences? And then some songs you used to listen to that don't make sense later make sense. And then you just feel like listening to Don when you have criticized his keyboard suddenly makes sense to you. He never sleeps. And that, and you begin to cry. It's an experience that is making you grow. Because out of that experience, the word of God will now come alive. Are you getting blessed, please? So, it's not enough to write. God is telling you to write all those things in your notebook. Because the day, the experiences of your life will bring you into the knowledge of that aspect of God. You will appreciate what you have written. That's why when you hear some people talking, you see, you see pastors standing up. They are touched by the statement. And the members are saying, what nonsense is this? The day you start running your own church, after three years, you stand up for every man that says what they said, that you are just watching. Because four, four weeks after you begin to pastor, the four weeks is full of crisis that you have to settle. And you say, Lord, did you call me? So next time you are seeing somebody say, God is faithful. And the man of God is relating it to his pain. His pain has become a message that helps him to understand what the Holy Spirit can do in, the, in a man's life. This is how believers become matured. And if this is not taught in the body of Christ, we are going to have a crippled people. Are you listening to me? So you get up based on these experiences. My wallet has been missing for a long time. If it was before, I called it forth, called it forth, it didn't come. I said, Lord, look, I have, I have better things to pray about. I have a, a family of believers we need to train. But remember one time, I gave you a story that an angel came and brought it. I prayed, I said, where is that angel? Hallelujah. The rigor of going through ATM activities right now and all the things there. But when your heart is with God, anything that leaves you cannot, it only creates more space for Him to fill. So you see a believer walk and you are wondering how do people live like this? They just sat your father and he comes back dancing. And you are like, Daddy, are you joking? My school fees. He says, don't worry. I don't know what will happen. But I remember in 1975, a similar thing happened. And there was a song that I sang. Many of you don't have experiences that you can fetch. This is why testimony is important. When you give testimony, you give people a tool that they can use to fight Satan tomorrow. And then you become a matured Christian. Hallelujah. Kenneth Hagin went through all kinds of sicknesses that wanted to kill him. So when he stands ministering to people, God brings that memory. And out of that memory comes compassion. And from that compassion, the anointing will flow. You've not had any experience. That's why you say, this miracle service said, why are people always falling? The day you have their kind of disease, you will value our ministry. Hallelujah. Why must you prophesy? You are wasting our time, Jerry. The day your father looks at you and says, now you have become an adult. Fend for yourself. 
you will know whether you have believed God or not. And then you, you will begin to sing songs, including Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Now it will not be special number. An experience has compelled you to appreciate that revelation of the word. To the point that whenever you read John 3.16, you can start crying on stage. People are saying John 3.16 is not about the verse. It has made you to know the Holy Spirit in a certain way that you wouldn't know Him. This is how the ancients were dealt with by God. Certain experiences open certain dimensions of God. And so they knew that God was certain things and they died believing it. What do you believe about God? How have your experiences helped you to come into the knowledge, the experiential knowledge of God? Some of the dealings of God in our lives is what has given us audacity to be able to stand and declare certain things. And you watch and say, how old are these people that they speak with such audacity? It's not about the age. It's the depth of the experiences. Am I ministering to someone tonight? We are going to pray. When that happens, listen to me. You come to a point where you do not trust any other thing again aside from God. At that point, he becomes king of kings and lord of lords. Then you will now appreciate my song. King of my life, you are my all. Don't sing it. And I live for you alone. I wrote that song on Valentine's Day. And I lay my life for you listen my heart is yours is it making sense to you now my mind is yours my will is yours you're the king of my life so when the worship team raises they say ah this song is not sweet you, you enter an experience that will make that bitter water become sweet. And then every day you hear it. You say, ah. You may not know the song. You just say, my heart. And you keep saying my heart. And you are crying. And it's ministering to you. And you are shedding tears. And you are, you are shedding tears. When the victory comes, you take note of that song. Have you seen your, your parents noted certain songs? It doesn't make sense to you why they like it. They sang it the day you will be delivered. You almost died. Your father was almost dying of hypertension around the labor room. And that song ministered to him. And every time you sing it, he remembers you and the destiny of God in your life. Many of you look at my name and say, my name is not Abba. Why would they name me Joy? And then they will tell you the experience that led to that name. That they waited 10 years with no child. And then you came and they rejoiced. And then they called you Joy say it doesn't matter then three years you didn't get admission the day you get you say my name is joy the revelation has brought you to a position where you begin to appreciate certain things believers we need to grow this is where God is taking us when that happens the consummation of all things is that your body begins to experience that soteria. And then you can allow your body to be a channel through which the life and the power of God can flow to others. Your vocal cords become instruments through which you will communicate his life and power to others. At that point you become useful. But can I tell you something? This is the journey. Stop looking for power and manifestation. What you should be searching for right now is God. Say, Lord, give me an experience. An experience. Beyond Christianity. An experience. An experience. Lord, I desire an experience with you. I've had knowledge. I've had so many things. So when you hear Michael Smith say, it's all about you. You'll be wondering and say, ah all about him but lord i've given you all and the bible says i've been bought to the price 
I pray that the Lord will lead you into the pathway that will cause His Word to come alive in you. At that point, nobody will tell you to do evangelism again. It will not be guesswork. Listen. When God opens up the operations of the Spirit in your life, He brings you to a point where your mind and your intellect betrays you again and again. And there is only one option left. God and your love for Him. Like a Trinkuman, you say, Lord, I'm available. And you mean it from the depths of your heart. And when He begins to use you, you will, there will never be room for pride. Because the memories of the dealings will remain in your heart. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. The experiential dealings of the Spirit. That God will give you experiences. Listen. I like that song. Keep playing because we are going to sing it. But before we sing it, I know we are out of time. But just listen to me. You are going to pray. And in that prayer, you are going to cry unto God. And say, Lord, there are many things I know. But they have not become life in my life. Can you give me an experiential revelation of God? Can you use the things around me? To bring me to a point where I begin to appreciate you. Strengthen my conviction about the things I believe. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Strengthen my conviction, O oh God. Let my faith not fail me. Strengthen my convictions. That when I say God is faithful, I mean it. That when I say God is holy, I mean it. That when I say I'm righteous, I mean it. Come on, pray. In the place of prayer, as I study the word, I'm tired of reading letters. Let the word become flesh. Strengthen my Christian experience. Make my life a qualitative one. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, I subject my mind to the power of your spirit. I subject my mind to the power of your spirit. Breathe upon me, Holy Ghost. Breathe upon my mind. Affect my life. Breathe upon me. My thinking faculty. Invade my mindset. Change me. Help me not to trust in any other thing. Help me not to trust in any other thing. The songwriter says, My faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. He said, On Christ, the solid rock. Strengthen my Christian experience that when I say I love you, let it come from the depth of my heart. Strengthen my Christian experience. That when you send me, I will be faithful. Pray. Say, Lord, I want to grow beyond religion. Holy Ghost, begin to take me through your experiential feeling that is unique to me. Your experiential feeling that is unique to me. Let it make me strong. Let it make me know you. Pray, brothers and sisters, the knowledge of God through your experiences become your message to the world. The knowledge of God through your experiences will become your sermon. You will shout it at the mountain top. You will shout it. Nobody will stop you because it's not just a sermon, it's your experience, it's your story. Of how God took you through the dealings on the anointing, the dealings on character, the dealings on, on marriage, the dealings on habits. Is that he that bears fruit? My father will prove. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, I want to be a strong Christian. Give me.
me reason to pursue you in truth. Give me reason to pursue you. Strengthen my convictions before you send me, O oh God. For what will I tell the nations in the face of challenges? Strengthen my conviction. Let me be thoroughly taught in the school of the Spirit. Pray. Mataparakata. Hallelujah. So worship team, seek for an experience of your songs. Seek for an experience. Minister, seek for an experience. What message did God give you? Is there an experience that puts fire in it in your spirit? That's why Paul said, No man trouble me. There is a mark in my body that makes me know that I am of Christ. He didn't just call me. There is a mark while he was dealing with me. While he was building me. It left an imprint in my spirit that forever I know I am called. and then you will preach you will never lack a message every time you sit down with people there is always something to say they may call you a talkative but there are too many experiences you have come to know the Holy Ghost as a guide as an instructor as a teacher as a shepherd indeed for you the Lord is your shepherd you have come to know him as provider he has become El Shaddai. The name of the Lord has become a strong tower where you run to it and you are safe. Come on, just one minute, pray. Where there is nothing, there is no one. So your Christianity is not by force. You are not doing God a favor. Say, Lord, enough of Rema. I need experiences that will crystallize my feelings. I want to be convicted. I want to have power. Power. Power with God. I want my words to be full of light and audacity. Bring me to the place of feelings. Give me a message, oh God, out of my experiences with the Holy Ghost. Teach me how to prophesy. Teach me how to preach. Take me through your Bible school. Take me through your Bible college. Train me, O oh God. Train me, O oh God. Train me, O oh God. Teach me character. Teach me discipline. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to make decisions. Make me a leader. Holy Ghost, I've neglected you. But I open up my heart. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I need you more than ever before. Now I see that you are the secret of life. You are not just a Pentecostal phenomenon. And then you can say, I will pray in tongues. No one will kill my prayer life. I will pray in the spirit. I will sing in the spirit. I need an experience. Create a prayer altar for yourself. Create a place of Bible study for yourself. For yourself, not your group. Not your department, not your church, no God for yourself. Let your experiences give you a message about God. All 
All I need is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. All I need is you. From my heart, all I need is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. You must not be a musician to sing. You just need to have an experience. All I need is Where is the God that brought you out of fire? Where is the God that gave you admission? Have you forgotten His faithfulness? He seeks intimacy and koinonia is a platform that affords you the opportunity to know God for yourself. Give Him a name, let you experience it, lead you to a point where you call God a name that you do not know what else knows. Give Him a secret name that is a product of your feelings to Him. Rafa was the feelings of God with a man. Tyre was the feelings of God with a man. El Shaddai was the feelings of God with a man. Sikenu was the feelings of God with a man. What name will you get from your experience with God? What name will you teach the nation that God has become to you? All through this week, listen to me. Many of you are thinking ministry, fellowship, church. Carry your Bible, your jota. Let's restore the days in Zaria. Well, in the night, someone will carry a recharge card. I mean, a rechargeable lantern with tapes. And find a corner. And stay awake and say, Lord, there is something you must show me. I'm not, I'm not looking for it to become a pastor. I need it for life. Let there be a restoration of true hunger. Many of you have left your prayer lives because you started getting some things you were asking God to give you. Remember your hunger for God. Remember your passion. Remember what drove you to the place of the anointing. Remember your cry and your vows and your ordinances to your king. Do not forget. It's too early to forget how that you said, Oh Lord, no matter what you make me, you have my heart. Remember your vow. Remember your cries and your vigils unto God. And he said, Lord, if you will make me the head, get back to the place of prayer. Prayer for the purpose of knowing God, not just to meet a need. Get back to the place of Bible study where you can take one week and you are digging through scriptures. And say, Lord, I must flog out some things in my life. You are struggling with habits. You write them on a piece of paper. And have one week. Fasting and prayer. And say, Lord, this thing must leave. Where you say, Lord, you have told men that they are anointed. But I don't see any anointing in my life occasions have presented themselves for me to dispense the anointing but I've, been, I've not been able to do it I pray for people they are not healed with the Holy Ghost I need to have an experiential revelation of getting filled with the Holy Ghost and it causes you to have a retreat the word retreat has become a foreign word among believers right now only the word prosperity marriage, money, titles ministry we must restore true passion and godliness I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. Oh, I will search. Lord, ministry will not take me. I will search. I will search. I will search. He and I will not take your place in my life. I will search. I will search diligently. Like the ancient, my God, I will start. 
I will ask you questions in fastings and trying. I will not give up until I get an answer. For there is an answer I must tell my generation. There is a question. Hallelujah. We're out of time. I hope that I've been able to put a hunger in your heart. Some of you need to go back to your homes this night and just sit. And don't talk to anybody. No visitations. Get books. Get tapes. Lock yourself. You mustn't fast fully. You can get fruits. You can get liquids. Or you can even eat. Just concentrate. And say, Lord, I want to grow. I will stop lying to myself. I want to grow. We thank you for tonight. The dealings. The progressions. How the Holy Ghost brings men to maturity. Praise the Lord. Sorry we've taken time. We'll be out in a few minutes. If you're worshipping with us for the first time, we love you. What a night. I'd like you to please leave your seat and just come out quickly. We want to pray for you. Please appreciate them. Let's do it quickly. This is your first time worshipping with us as Koinonia. We love you. We celebrate you. We appreciate you. Please let's do it quickly. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to this powerful sermon. We hope you were blessed. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to listen to Apostle Joshua Selman's messages, Apostle Arome Osai's messages, Archbishop Benzi Dahosa, and Apostle Shubi Oluwatsubidola's sermon. Thank you very much. Enjoy. <laughs>